Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. You are looking at an altered and um, not sure the word upgraded is right, but uh, reconfigured Singer 185K. And um, you may recall that this is the machine that I uh, was able to get and it had a uh, 220 volt motor because it was it was brought over from the United Kingdom into North America but it was brought over with electricals that were designed to work in the United Kingdom so it was not it was made in the UK but it wasn't made to be sold here originally and so I had the option I could have gone out and looked for another BT motor I didn't have one sometimes I have extras but I didn't um, that would run on North American voltage and so my option, because those motors used on this particular machine setup, they use the three pin terminal, which is actually integrated into the bracket that holds the motor to the machine. Sometimes, some Singer machines have the three pin terminal. It's, it's mounted uh, separately from, um, you can take it off of where the motor bracket is, but not on this particular motor design. Oops, just a spoon flying there. Anyway, so I got a 1.2 amp motor. Came on originally on a Kenmore. And I uh, have a new belt, of course. And then, well, how do you connect that? Because the, the basically, you have motor cord, and then you have a light cord. The original light cord is in great shape. So uh, I had a brand new... Um, a electronic foot pedal uh, double outlet or dual outlet cord setup. <clears throat> These are uh, replacements for some of those uh, uh, dual outlet cords you often see in 1950s and 60s Japanese machines um, as well as some others. And so I had that and so I simply added a new plug on the end of the motor cord and a new plug uh, on the end of the um, or this is the, the, the light cord and then the motor cord. And if, as some of you may know, uh, when it comes to these dual outlet boxes, these little cords that have these dual outlets, the, this new one is marked. One is marked motor, which is this one here. And then the, you can't see it underneath. If you take the plug out, you'll see the label. One is marked light. And you always want to make sure that you plug those in the, the appropriate uh, receptacle okay because they're not interchangeable if you don't you won't it won't run properly uh, anyway that's how it's designed to work so we have a new foot pedal and this new cord and uh, everything seems to be working great and I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, uh, gonna put this on the tripod so I'm not no longer trying I'm not gonna try to hold this while I uh, attempt to show off the machine so but as you can see, uh, this machine, as I've mentioned when I, in one of the other videos I made on it, it is the same exact machine as the 185Js that you often see in kind of a two-tone mint pistachio green color scheme. Uh, those in the UK, they may have produced green ones there as well, but they, they were, um, you more often will see this sort of a, a brown and mocha, I don't know what you would call it, beige and, beige and brown color scheme, two-toned. Uh, but again, this is a Singer 99. If you own a Singer 99, you basically have this same machine. The only, the only real difference that, that uh, you know, the hand wheel change shape and then the bobbin winder uh, design was slightly changed. But other than that, it's underneath, it's a Singer 99 or a Singer 66 for the wider version. Uh, true and true, it's a good old tractor of a machine and I'm going to basically uh, get this one ready now. This is again, this was my approach. You can uh, get uh, three pin terminal bracketed BT motors that are North American spec and they would literally, you know, you could put one on, it was in good shape, and simply swap it out um, for the old one that was rated for British electrical system, grid, electrical grid systems. Um, oh, the other thing that happened uh, with this particular retrofit is I think that's the word I was looking for I wanted to use this box but my cords were not long enough and instead of splicing and extending the cords I ended up putting two uh, I got some one by twos uh, and they're six and a half inches deep just like this uh, this little uh, compartment here on the side and I put uh, glued down velcro 
on, on the top of that. And then I have Velcro on the bottom so that when I go to, ins it's, it's been glued and been curing, so when I press down, I now have a way to hold this, um, this, uh, this little box basically in place. And if it ever needs to be moved, it can. It doesn't really need to be, but I like using the Velcro because it's pretty strong, um, uh, and yet it also makes it uh, flexible if you have to move it for some reason. Very often, I'll normally just attach them with the Velcro, but down below. But because of the length of the cords, I just cut a couple pieces of wood, and it actually looks... It's not original, but it looks close to being original, so uh, I was pleased with how that turned out. Um, so, there you go, guys. That is the 185K, originally manufactured in the United Kingdom, but unlike many machines that you find in North America that say made in Great Britain, this one was not originally sold in North America. It was sold in the United Kingdom, and it came with 220 volt uh, motor, which you cannot run on the 110 voltage here in North America. So I have swapped it out because the rest of the machine is the same. You know, the, the drivetrain and the mechanics are all the same. That's the great thing about Singer. Uh, occasionally, they would make sewing machines in different countries with different specifications, such as those made in Germany, some of the models made in Germany. But overall, Singer was pretty good about keeping things consistent. It saved them money, um, and today it really helps those of us who restore them because uh, the interchangeability of parts is fantastic. It's just that with the motor, that was one of the exceptions. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll be making a video soon uh, on basically showing how she sews. Take care, everyone, and we will see you next time.